Sometimes, though, the heart just doesn't work as well as it should. And that's when something called congestive heart failure becomes a concern. It's a condition that affects more than 5 million people, but the name heart failure can be a bit misleading. Joining us today to explain is Jeannie Ruff, Executive Director of the Guerrero Heart and Vascular Institute at PRMC. Thank you for joining us Thank this you. afternoon. Thank you. Happy to be here. Okay, so when some people hear heart failure, uh, they automatically assume that that means the heart just stops working, but that's not the case, no, is it? No, heart failure basically means that the heart isn't working as efficiently. The pump action of the heart just isn't squeezing as efficiently as it, as it should. So you can certainly see that term of failure not necessarily means it's completely Completely failed. It's just not right. working as efficiently. Okay, looking at this picture, explain to us what's happening between the bad heart on the right, good heart on the left. Well, you can see that there's actually two chambers on the bottom part. Right. There's the left side and the right side. With the heart failure side on the right side of chamber, you can see how much longer and dilated that chamber is compared to the healthy heart where, where those right. arrows are. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's where that heart, that chamber called the left ventricle is more dilated or larger and it's not working as efficiently. You also see less of that wall motion right. on the um, heart failure side yeah. versus the healthy heart side where there's much more muscle mm -hmm. um, compared to the others. So again, it's a dilated or elongated chamber which just isn't pumping as efficiently. So what causes it? Well, there can be many, many factors. Um, there can be um, pro there can be a long history of having untreated hyper hypertension. Mm -hmm. um, you can have coronary artery disease where there's actual heart muscle damage to the, to the muscle of the heart itself, which impacts on the contractility of the heart. Sometimes you can even get an infection, which tends to reside in the heart itself, which can impact on the contractility of the heart. Okay, and, and people's behaviors can also have a lot to do with it too. Absolutely, as we talk about February Heart Month and all the healthy choices, this correlates so closely with congestive heart failure. Again, not smoking, controlling your blood pressure, maintaining a healthy, healthy diet, excessive of drinking and, and drug abuse can also contribute to the heart muscle so just live, live healthy. Okay, Ab absolutely. So, are there any symptoms that we can look for in heart disease? Typically, um, the most classic symptoms are increased short shortness of breath, um, increased weight gain, also peripheral edema or swelling in the ankles. But notoriously, it's fatigue and shortness of breath, where there's just too much volume to be able to be pumped efficiently, which contributes to those symptoms. Okay, so once heart failure has been diagnosed. Mm -hmm it can be treated. Absolutely, and that's what's so important. Patients with heart failure do not need to feel or feel like they should give, give up. Certainly um, being under the direction of their primary care physician along with their cardiologist is imperative. Making sure that they take the, the prescription meds that they are prescribed to control their blood pressure, to control the amount of fluid or volume that they have, mm -hmm. and to enhance the contractility of, of the heart. Um, so certainly medication compliance, exercise, dietary choices, reducing the sodium in your in your diet because sodium makes you want to retain fluid more right. fluid means more volume more volume means more more work on on the heart itself so what is the prognosis for patients with heart failure well I think that it's just once you have it you have it but yet there's so many wonderful treatment options for them again with the advances in, in um, prescription medications there's um, as the as what was shown before the left ventricular assist device for patients that are truly end, end stage um, um, there it's defibrillators that can be put in to enhance the contractility of the heart. And I think it's a lot of self-management and awareness for patients to understand what they have, what the symptoms are, more importantly, what they can do to control it. So, so it's not all on the doctor. Absolutely not, Jimmy. Um, so much of health concerns today when we're dealing with chronic chronic disease management is patients' roles, their family roles, and really lifestyle habits of being aware, knowing what they do, asking questions, and being well-informed. And finally, we touched on it. Prevention trumps treatment, and, and, and you really need to keep track of, of any kind of symptoms you have. Absolutely. Self-awareness and self-management is, is so very important. Understanding your symptoms, complying with your meds complying with your doctor's appointments all lead to you managing your your heart failure but more importantly we at peninsula regional have a new program called the peninsula heartline program which is specifically designed for patients with congestive heart failure okay. these individuals are screened and then um, they can call in and answer five questions based on their symptoms every day if there's a change in their symptoms from one day to the next that gets triggered into a computer program and then one of the members from the cardiac rehab staff review 
those variances and they actually make a call to that patient to say, hey, what made that difference in terms of your symptom? Did you have some Chinese food last <laughs> evening that might have contributed to your, to your weight gain? Which again, the early detection of those symptoms, we want to avoid that hospitalization. So in fact, we may then get the patient in to see their physician to adjust their meds or just to reassure that patient on what they can do. All tying in to that self-management, self-awareness, early prevention and detection. All right. What a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, you so thank much, you. Jeannie. Thank you. Happy to be here. And to read more from PRMC about congestive heart failure or for more information on the Peninsula Heartline program, go to WBOC.com and click on our picture at the top of the page.